Coming to the Gospel of Luke, I want to read some scripture before we pray. I know I just want to encourage us this morning, and before I come over to share, obviously when it was a week or two ago, I seek the Lord and I ask God, I said, Lord, give me something. And I believe you know that Lord, Lord's word will speak this morning if our hearts will be open. And if we prepare our hearts for the word of the Lord this morning. And whatever we have in our minds, I believe we need to cast it to one side and we need to concentrate upon Jesus this morning. Do we believe that this morning? We will only take out the word of the Lord of what we will put in. I want to read from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 10. And I want to read from verse 38. Like I said, I was, I was torn between a couple of messages of what the Lord, you know, I believe what I was going to bring, I should say. And, you know, the Lord led me, you know, to this message. And if I was to put a title on this message this morning, it would be too busy for Jesus. It would be too busy for Jesus. And I think it's something that we can all apply to our life, you know, this morning. I know that God's Word, it, it can rebuke us, it can teach us, it can help us to go the ways that we need to go and, you know, that's what the Word of God does, doesn't it? By the power of His Holy Spirit. But you know, this morning I know that this little short message, whatever it may be, it, it's a message that I know that we can take from the Word of the Lord. We can be encouraged, we can be corrected. But you know, this morning, let's read some scripture in there. In Luke chapter 10, and verse 38, it speaks about a very well-known story of two women called Mary and Martha. And this is what the Word of God says. It says, Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered the village. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat down at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. Let's bow our heads and let's begin to pray this morning, church. Let's pray that God's word is speak. We don't have to pray for God's word, it's anointed. But let's pray that God would open up our hearts and minister to our lives this morning. Amen. Pray that God would use me for his glory this morning. Amen. I can do nothing without the power of God's spirit. Amen. Let's begin to pray. My Heavenly Father, as we come, my Lord Jesus, before you this morning, my God, we want to thank you for the gathering, my Lord, of your saints, my God, this morning. Thank you, Lord, my God, that we can worship you, my God, in spirit, my God, in truth. We can take from your table, my God, to remember, my God, your death and your resurrection, Lord. But Lord, I pray as we come around your word this morning, Lord, that you would minister, my God, to people's lives. You would minister to our hearts, my God, and our lives, my God, that we would take from your word this morning, my God. Allow your spirit, my God, your Holy Spirit, my God, to minister to our lives, Lord Jesus. I pray you'd use me for your glory this morning, Lord. For Lord, you know, I can do nothing without you this morning, my God. Use me as a vessel, Lord Jesus, for you, my God. Apart, my God, from you, Lord, I can do nothing, my God. But Lord Jesus, my God, we pray this morning. Speak to our hearts, my God. Minister to us, Lord, through your word. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Amen. You know, like I said, if I was to put a title on this message, it would be too busy for Jesus. Is that a bit of a background of... A little bit of a background, you know, of what was going on at this time. Jesus comes to the house, very, very well-known story, comes to the house of Mary. It indicates when we look through biblical history that Mary was probably the owner of the house because the Bible speaks that it was her house. Mary, the Bible says, and there was a, another sister called Martha. Now, this was a place called Bethany, a couple of miles away from Jerusalem. We see that the Word of God tells us that this is the same Mary and Martha that has the brother Lazarus that Jesus raises from the dead. We know that story when Jesus raises Lazarus back on from, from the dead, amen. But as we read here, we clearly see two types of people. And that's what I want to see what we can take from the word of the Lord this morning and allow God's word to speak to us this morning. Because we see two types of people. We see a worker and we see a worshipper. Amen. And this morning, I know that we can take from the word of the Lord if we just took from that this morning. But you know, we look in the word of God and we see that one of the sisters, Mary, she was shut at the feet of Jesus listening. Her ears were open, her heart was open, and she was at the feet of Jesus Christ. Now think, this is the son of the living God. This is Jesus Christ. And we see that while she was at the feet of Jesus, she was listening to what Jesus was saying. Amen. We see that the other sister, Martha, she was busy serving. She was serving, she was inside the house. And what we must understand is this this morning, church. 
Mary welcomed Jesus into her home. Jesus came into her home and she welcomed him in gladly. But what did she do? She neglected Jesus. She neglected Jesus. She neglected him when he was there. Now think about that this morning. She neglected him. And what I want to have a little speak about this morning with the help of the Lord is, can me can we and you do that this morning? Can we neglect Jesus Christ? If we be real before the Lord and open up our hearts this morning, let our hearts be searched. You see, just like ourselves, we must understand this. When we hear that Jesus was the saviour of this world, when we hear that Jesus was the only way, the only truth and the only life, we know then that we had to make a decision and ask him into our hearts. As the brother said, we confess with our mouth, we believe in our hearts that Christ Jesus died and rose from the grave, then we became born again. Yes. Was that right this morning? Amen. Amen. But when we became born again by the Spirit of God, we allowed Jesus into our lives, didn't we? Amen. We allowed Jesus into our homes, we opened up a door, and we let him in. But it's the same as how we see that Mary let Jesus into her home, and just like she let her into home and neglect her, me and you can very, very sadly, if we be real, we can neglect Jesus Christ. We can neglect him. And you know, we, we see, church, what we must understand is this, right? I don't know about you this morning, but in my walk with Jesus, I would love to spend more time with the Lord. Can we say amen this morning? Amen. I would love to spend more time, and I pray that I can spend more time in the presence of the Lord. Spend more time in the presence of His Word. Because we know that when we stay in the presence of God, when we take from the Word of the Lord through prayer, we start to grow in the Lord, don't we? Yeah, yes. We start to grow in the Lord. We start to go forward. We start to go deeper in the things of the Lord. And this is what God has willed for all of our lives this morning, I believe. But we see that what we must understand is this, and I want you to listen carefully. It's a wonderful thing to serve the Lord. Amen. It's a wonderful thing to be able to serve the Lord in whatever way we can. We can pick up the papers, we can organize car parks, we can put the chairs out, whatever it may be, it is a blessing to serve the Lord. And we know that this morning, and we know that this is something that we need to do. The Bible tells us these things. But what we must understand is this, it's far more important to listen to the voice of Jesus Christ. It's far more important to spend time at the feet of Jesus Christ. Can we say amen this morning? Amen. Far, far more important, and this is what we must understand this morning. It's daily spending time with Jesus. It's daily spending not just time, but quality time at the feet of Jesus Christ is where me and you, where we need to be. Yes. And I'll tell you the reason why, because it's like this, my brothers and sisters. And listen very carefully to what I'm saying this morning. What we do with Christ is far more better than what we do for Christ. Does that make sense this morning? Yes. What we do with him is better than what we do for him. And what I want to look at this morning is this. When we spend time with Jesus, when we are at his feet each and every single day of our lives, allowing him to minister to our hearts, allowing him to speak to our lives, serving him comes natural, doesn't it? Yes. Can we say amen this morning? Serving comes natural. You see, when we're in tune with God, we see that as the brothers uh, led in worship this morning, and he said that, you know, if you come draw near to me, I will draw near to you. And it's simple, it's simple this morning, my brother and my sister, but it's about spending that quality time with Jesus Christ. It's about being at his feet. It's about listening to his voice. And I believe that sometimes, like the title that I've put on this message this morning, I think we can become too busy for Jesus. I think we can become too busy in this life that we live, in this world that we live, that we can become too busy for Jesus. And this is where we have to come to an understanding and realise is that it's no matter what we do, we can come to this meeting three times a week. We can be feeding the homeless, we can go every single day, we can serve and we can go and we can go and we can go. But unless we communicate with the Master, what good is it? Unless we communicate with Jesus and say, Lord, and spending time into his presence, what good is it, my brother and sister? What does the Bible say in John 15 verse 5? Apart from me, you can do nothing. nothing. We can't do nothing spiritually without Jesus Christ. Right. We can't do nothing. Let Amen. me tell you something. If this church was established upon a man or upon his feelings, it wouldn't last with it. Right. Amen. But because of Jesus. But because of Jesus doing the work that he's doing. And it comes by prayer. It comes from his word. And my brother and sister, we must realise and listen very, very carefully to what I'm saying this morning. Apart from Jesus, me and you can do nothing. Me and you can do nothing this morning. It's all about Jesus this morning, man. Hallelujah. 
Yeah. It's all about Jesus this morning. See, Martha, she was more interested in the physical. She was more interested in, listen, thank the Lord that Martha, that Mary, sorry, is it Mary? Thank God that Martha, uh, Martha was interested, sorry, of spending time and receiving from the Lord spiritually. She wanted to receive from God spiritually. She knew exactly what she needed feeding on this morning. Just like me and you, we've come here this morning and we expect to receive from the word of the Lord, don't we, brothers and sisters? And I thank God for that. We're all in out this morning. That we're hungry for the word of God. We've come, we've took time out and we're taking from the word of the Lord. But it's like this. Mary was the opposite. She was more bothered about the physical. She was more bothered. And like I said, thank the Lord, as I was going to say at first, that she was serving. Thank God that she was seen to Jesus because the disciples probably would have been there. And she saw to them, she gave them food. Like when people can come into our homes. But my brother and my sister, let me tell you something this morning. If I was to bring in this church, or the brothers was to organise, and was to bring in the, the, the beautifulest food you've ever seen. If you can bring in the little parties, you can bring in your TGI Fridays, you can bring in whatever you want. And if you brought it in and you'd eat it, you'd say, you know what, that was lovely. That was very, very good, and that was good for the brothers to do that. It was very, very nice, but let me tell you something. Far more better than bringing you the word of the living God. Yes. Far more better than to bring you the spiritual food that we need. Yeah. And this is what, Ma what Martha, this is what, what we see that she was, she was more bothered about. The spiritual. And my brother and sister, let me tell you something. That's what me and you need to be interested in this morning. Amen. Mm. This is what me and you need to continue to keep eating. That's the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's laying at the feet of Jesus by listening to his word, by taking from it. You know, we look in the word of the Lord and we see that Mary's devotion was to listen to the word of God. Mary's devotion was to sit at the feet of Jesus. Nothing else around the mattered. Nothing else around her what was going on. She didn't care. She was at the feet of Jesus. And let me ask you a question this morning. And listen, only God can search your heart this morning. What's your devotion this morning? What is your devotion? What are you devoted to in your life? Let me tell you something. We can be devoted to many things. Is it the work that you're devoted to? Are you thinking about what you're going to do tomorrow? You've got to get on this job. You've got to get it done. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. Let me tell you something. We look and we see, is it the family? Is it the lifestyle that we live? Are we more bothered about that? About what people are looking at? How I look and the things I do and the things that I buy? Or should we be devoted to the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. Should we be devoted to him? Yes, we should. Let me tell you something. My brother and my sister, Jesus is coming back very, very soon. Amen. How much more should we be ready, my brother and sister? Right. How much more should we be putting our own lifestyles and our own ways to one side and saying, Jesus, it's all about you. Amen. It's not about me. It's not about what I can get. It's not about what I can do. But it's about spending present time in the presence of you each and every day of my life. And you know, when we, when we do that, we start to devote ourselves to Jesus, don't we? We devote ourselves to Jesus. We devote our lives to Jesus. But you know, let us flip the coin for a minute. Let's flip the coin and let's see now, right? So we understand that we need a devotion. We understand that we need to spend time in his presence, time in his prayer, in the house of the Lord, worshipping God. This is how we will grow. This is how we will go forward. Then automatically we will serve the Lord in many, many different ways. But if we flip the coin from being devoted and giving our very all to Jesus, let's flip the coin and let's think what makes us distracted from Jesus. What distracts us from the Lord? Just like I've said with work, with lifestyles, with whatever else it may be. Let the Lord search your heart now as I speak and think, what is the distraction that stops you from spending time at the feet of Jesus? What is your distraction from spending time with God, wherever you are, wherever you may be? You can be in a motor, a house, you know, you can be anywhere. God's presence is with us. But what is your distraction, church? What is your personal distraction? Have you got a distraction and say, every single time I want to spend time with the Lord, the phone will ring. Every single time I want to try to take that time out, you know, I've got to go to work. I've got work service on the phone. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And we know that there is somebody who wants to distract us, church, isn't there? There's somebody who wants to take our eyes so much off the word of God that we wouldn't realise. And unfortunately, we've tasted it. Unfortunately, we saw it that when we've been distracted so much that the enemy's had a field day. And little do we know, we see that brothers and sisters are so weak and they're falling into temptations and they're falling into many different things. And the brothers will tell you, they can come down for prayer. When you ask them, you say, you know, they'll say, I'm weak. I feel weak. I feel down. And you simply ask them, have you been spending time at the feet of Jesus? And the answer always is, no. I haven't been spending time with Jesus. I've allowed the problems, I've allowed the situations, I've allowed the things that's going on around me to stop me from being at the feet of the Lord. Let me ask you a question this morning. I'll be real before Jesus. 
Has anybody been there this morning? Has anybody been there? Come on, church. Let's be real before the Lord. God sees our hearts. God knows our hearts this morning. We know where we need to be. And glory to Jesus that his word directs us, doesn't it? His word leads us and guides us. And this is the reason why. Because it says it leads us through the paths of righteousness. Be holy for he is holy. And it's through the word of God that allows us all about Jesus, my brothers and sisters. But we see in the word of the Lord, we can ask ourselves a question. What is our distraction? What is our distraction from the things of the Lord? What is our distraction from Jesus this morning? Man? I don't even know that this morning. I don't know that this morning. I don't know your hearts. I don't know what you do. I don't know where you're going. I don't know what Jesus does this morning. And that's why we need to have our hearts searched. That's why we need to open up our hearts and say, Lord, you know, I have been distracted. You know, Lord, I have been doing these things, but Lord, help me to get back to your feet. Help me to spend time. You know, I believe that when Jesus spoke and he says to Martha, he said, you know, you're anxious, you're worried, you're mindful about doing what you're doing. But she has chosen what is right. She has chosen what was best. Do we believe that she would carry on and keep doing what she's doing? I believe she probably would have took a seat right at the side of her sister and said, Lord, this is where I need to be. Forgive me. And you know, we can take so much from that. And I'll tell you what it is this morning. As believers, I'll tell you what we need to do. As believers, who believes we need to check our priorities? Anybody? We need to check our priorities, don't we? And we look at that word priority, and it simply means for something that is more important than other things. Let me tell you something this morning, church. If Jesus was the most important thing in your life, if you love Jesus and you want to walk with him and you want to enter him into heaven, do you know what? It'll show. It'll show. Why? How? For the way that we live. For the things that we do. For the time that we spend it with Jesus. This is how we know that we love Jesus. This is how we know. We saw that Mary was at the feet and there was no better place where she could be. Let me tell you something this morning. I don't know about me and you, but speaking for myself this morning, sometimes my priorities can be up and down. Sometimes we know that we can be distracted with so many things that this world can bring us. Family problems, health, this, that, many different things. And before we know it, we must understand that my priorities is not right. I need to start putting the Lord above my problems. I need to start putting the Lord first in my life. I need to start being at the feet of Jesus, spending time, having the word of God open. Just spending that quiet time with the Lord, allowing him to minister to our lives. My brother and my sister, it only benefits us. No, but priorities, let me tell you something. Ask you one more question, I'm going to close shortly. What's the most important thing in your life? Allow that to search your life this morning. What's the most important thing in your life this morning? Is it the things you've got? Is it your family? You know, is it the abilities of what you've got or what you can do and how clever you are? I don't know. Or the important thing in this whole world as born again believers shouldn't be Jesus. Shouldn't be Jesus. Because my brother and sister, he needs to be put in his rightful place. He needs to be put. Say amen this morning. He needs to be put in his rightful place. We look in the word of the Lord and we know sometimes we need to check our priorities. When we look at the word of God, we saw Mary, right? And when we look for the Bible, when you take time out and you see where Mary was on three occasions, it speaks that where Mary was. And every single time we see Mary, one of them, she broke the alabaster jar at Jesus' feet. We see her here at the feet and we see her again. Every time she was at the feet of Jesus, worship the Lord. Yes. She was at the feet of Jesus, listening to the Lord. Yes. She was at the feet of Jesus saying, Lord, show me how to live. Show me how to walk. Show me what to do. Lord, I'm going through a situation, Lord. Instead of me taking it on my own back, Lord, you show me through your word, Lord. By the power of God's Holy Spirit, he does, doesn't he? Amen. By the power of God's Holy Spirit, he does. Let me tell you something this morning, church. Let us not become too busy for Jesus. Amen. Let us be busy for Jesus. Amen. But let us not become too busy for Jesus. You know, I'm going to finish on the scripture and I'll just quote it. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, it says this. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Amen. For what? They will be filled. Amen. Do you want to be filled this morning? Do you want to be at the feet of Jesus this morning? Has your priorities been up and down this morning? I don't know this morning. But this morning, let's get back to the feet of Jesus. Yeah, this morning, let's not be running up and down, being busy for our own selves and our own lifestyles. But let's be where we need to be. Let's put our priorities right. Let's power it in the house of the Lord this morning.